Let me. Usually, I get invited round to people's houses to go through their record collections. Of course, you do. Why are we here? Well, because I live six thousand miles away, and it's very difficult for us to walk over there in the same for me. Has know? this place actually got a, a, a reference to you and your life? Yeah, I must have spent six hundred pound a week on the one on bandit down here <laughs> one time, and then I, I see it's gone. They must have uh, run down in revenue there. So you were born in Stoke, weren't you? Stoke on Trent. Yeah, briefly, yeah. Which, which was a uh, birthplace for Slash. Yeah. Robbie true. Williams as well. Birthplace of rock and roll. I would try not to mention the bummers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> rock and roll heritage then. From it's a dump, from man. Stoke. Let's face it, it's a dump. It's a good place to move out of, you know. And. You were born on Christmas Eve. Your dad was a vicar as well. Yeah. So the religious life didn't beckon for you? Well, it is a kind of religion, rock and roll. It's my religion. I'll go along with that one. Yeah. Um, it makes more sense than Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what would be the first record you bought then? The first record I bought was Tommy Steele. I'm 78, doing New Deep in the Blues, mainly due to the fact that I'd never heard the original. <laughs> yeah, because there was a time. I mean, it's. it's almost impossible to believe now, but Tommy was the British rocker. He was the first one that we saw on TV, because I'm, I'm stuck in Wales, right? So we didn't get much rock and roll in Wales. What's the first record that really grabbed you, that pulled you in, that you thought, hang on a minute, this is it? Little Richard, we'd call him as Molly. With Little Richard, there was definitely, there was that flamboyant side, wasn't there? Were you aware of that? I mean, it wasn't probably until later that you realised that he was a raving queen. Well, you could hear it in his voice, you know, like... I always describe it as like fierce joy, you know. He, he was the best rock and roll vocal. I still think that today. Yeah. He was the ultimate rock and roll vocal. They, they don't come any better than that. Did you go and see the, what was it, the Gil Carn Alpit, which was the first colour rock and roll movie? It never got released in England. Didn't it? I thought it did. Not, not till much later. Rock Around the Clock we saw, you know. And there was riots at the cinema, so they banned all the others. Yeah. Great. The British, you know. <laughs> 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 Were you a bit of a mini Ted on the side? Did you sport a quiff? I wasn't a mini Ted. I was the real thing, man. What was the impact like? Because Britain, you, you sort of, if you look back at it, it was very drab, grey. Still is, isn't it? And yeah, but was... I'm talking about the showmanship as well. That it might, you know, and these these records with no one had heard energy like that on records. I know you had to be there to understand it. To, to look back on it now, it sounds badly recorded and amateurish and like oh, kind of tame as well. as well. However, then it was magic. Can you still listen to things like Good Golly Miss Molly and get oh, off yeah, on man. it? Yeah, Good Golly Miss Molly is eternal. This was denounced from every pulpit across America. Yeah. yeah. Spawn of Satan. Did you get off on this rebellious side that was coming through? Of course. Immediately. <laughs> if that was dragging you into the whole thing, can you name a record that made you pick up the guitar? Um, the Shadows, it would have been The Shadows. They're a very good band, The Shadows. They're, they're, they're very much overlooked now. You know, but they're a great force in British rock and roll music. The Shadows always had that. that move. Know, well, they were only copying the American know, groups, you know. I still think it looks good, you know. I like to see them old clips of American bands like The Temptations all doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's impressive because it looks like they worked at it. Yeah. You know, it looks like they know what they're doing. Apart from some geezer in a like plaid shirt looking at his feet all the way through. You know, I mean it's a lot better than that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Next up. Go on, yeah. Okay. You see, I've been very privileged. I lived through several magic times. I lived through the original rock and roll, I lived through the Beatles. I was in London during the upsurge of the psychedelia thing in nineteen sixty seven. It was great, you know. I've been really lucky. And what about what what Look what you missed, guys. I need the old. <laughs> but look what you missed. Oh, I had Acid House. <laughs> acid House? <laughs> Impressed? No. <laughs> <laughs> Were you always a, a leather and denim man, or did you not fall into the suave sophistication of the mod thing? No, I hated mods. We, we all hated mods, because we had long hair, and mods hated that. And they drove scooters, which I thought was impossible, you know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how can you be mean on a Vespa, you know? <laughs> it just isn't going to work, is it, you know? <laughs> I liked a couple of the mod bands, you know, but I, I just couldn't do that Parker thing. Right. What about bands like the Yardbirds? Obviously, like a fantastic guitar orientated band as well. Well, the, what they did was they spawned guitarists, mainly the Yardbirds, you know. I mean, they were a great band originally with Clapton, and they used to play the Marquee Residency, which used to be across the road, another cultural heritage icon destroyed. <laughs> 
God, how I hate does it. Does it make you a little bit, coming back and seeing all these things that have disappeared every Listen, day? Listen, I'm now. pissed off because I went on Monday and said, never, <laughs> never mind the marquee going. Pull up, which yeah. sort of epitomised that whole swing in London thing as well, didn't no, it? No, it didn't. It it give, give, me the, give me the truth. It epitomised the artistic bloody angst of There's the cameraman. There's a lot of shagging going thing. on in that film. Well, of course there was. We discovered acid in the pill at the same time. What do you expect? You know? <laughs> Everybody was fucking like rabbits everywhere you look. <laughs> you know, in and doorways, did, in the bath, in bed, you know. Did you get lucky? Lucky? I've always been lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Often? At that time? Often. Almost constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let me give me the secret of your success then, no. as far as women goes. <laughs> I chase them, that's why I catch them, you know. If you don't chase them, you don't catch them, that's it, simple. Uh, a rough guess, how many do you reckon you've had over the years then? Over the I don't know, over 1,500. <laughs> Probably 2,000. <laughs> that's my line. I was keen, I you know. <laughs> what about this, um, this sex change um, episode? I fuck one of them, yeah. Go on, tell me what was it? Well, was I the figured if he's got the guts to have his dick and balls removed, I've got the guts to fuck him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if we're in the uh, the the late sixties, we're in the yeah. summer of love, the hippies. What 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 was going on all around then? Was, was it not a con? Was that whole thing a little bit of a? It wasn't a con for about a year. Then it was, you know. Did you get involved in that? Did you go for the? Or the, the no, it was the... Jimi Hendrix's roadie. What did you expect? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, he came back from America with 100,000 tabs of acid, right? Who, oh, Jimmy had? Yeah, it wasn't even illegal then. He brought it back in his suitcase. And he, he gave half of it around the crew. I mean, that's a lot of acid. You and know? what were you, you were part of the crew at the time then? Well, there's only two of us. Right. What were you doing? <laughs> Seems ridiculous now. There's only two of us well, doing only three all in the Hendrix's band. stuff. <laughs> all Hendrix's stuff, two of us. And what about the acid then? Was it a continual trip? Oh, yeah, we had so much of it, we had to get rid of it somehow. <laughs> yeah, because it became illegal. We had to get rid of the evidence. This is not an advert. No, it's not, no. <laughs> Just experience talking, yeah. I suppose a band that stood, totally stood against the whole hippie ethics was a band that was uh, out of uh, uh, Detroit, MC5, yeah? No, they was as bent as everybody else. <laughs> No, it was just that they had pretensions to politics, you know. But they were a burnout, you know. I mean, they all wound up on smack, you know. And Wayne Kramer was the victim of a sting by the FBI and wound up in prison for five years, you know. Didn't their manager get... Didn't he get busted for, for two, two joints and he got nine... nine years for yeah. two joints, I yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's home of the brave land of the free man, you know. <laughs> the establishment. Because they're going to fuck you. <laughs> Don't care who you are. They're going to fuck you with income tax or something or put you in jail if you disagree with them. You know, the establishment has always been an asshole, you know. So when you're in Hawkwind, what, what sort of... How did you go about setting out to live that life of anti-establishment? Our very existence threatened them. Why? Because we were doing everything that they hated. We weren't in a regular job. We weren't paying our taxes regular. We weren't, like, you know, joining the young conservatives or whatever it is, you know. We were just, like getting wrecked and playing music that we liked, and they don't like that. No. Because you're not a productive member of the community, you know. So fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> fuck them then and fuck them now. Do you think, it, yeah, still now? You still carry that? Oh, man, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you don't distrust politicians, there's something badly wrong with you. <laughs> so if the pre-punk 70s was... Seventy-one to Lo seventy-six. Los, Los Angeles was busting open with what can only be called soft rock with Fleetwood Mac. Um, I wouldn't Eagles. call it soft rock. I'd call it smart rock because it was great musicianship. Has, it, has this got a place in your record collection then? Some of, of these. Of course, you know. I mean, there, there was great stuff coming out. I mean, it doesn't have to be raucous all the time. Take me to a place with your a record from your collection, The Eagles. Hotel California. That's a great a lot, song. A lot of people, when that came out, I remember a lot of people thinking it was like a celebration of that whole California thing. That slightly bordering on bland, almost. That's the thing, you see. People but think the, the wrong thing every time. It's a fucking yeah. great subtext that runs is a great in, song. into that. Could also be about coke, really, couldn't it? I think the whole album was about coke, don't you? Move to America? 1990. Did you embrace the Californian lifestyle? No. Epitomised in the... Uh, they embraced the... me. Hmm. Well, some of them did, anyway. I mean, I noticed that with all the hot weather, women wear less all the year round, so it appealed to me immediately. <laughs> but I didn't know that at the time. 
But I don't regret moving there, it's good. Don't miss anything there? What about Friday night pint and the curry? Not really. I was never one of them fellas. <laughs> didn't eat much? No, I just didn't want to vomit into my own plate, you know, which is one of the highlights of that culture, you know. <laughs> I never liked football anyway, you know. <laughs> Imagine all the fucking you could be doing when you're running up and down that field. <laughs> wasting your energy on a stupid little ball. You know. When it could be tits. <laughs> Better. Hey. I rest my case. The seventies were well chronicled with tales of excess. Yes, weren't they? Weren't they just? Yes. Groupies? Ah, uh, you see, that's the funny word, you see. Mostly I've never heard a guy in a band say that word ever. Right. It's always the people on the outside. No, it's always women talking about other women and interviewers. It's so old. What word do you use then? It's so overworked. Listen, there's chicks that like to fuck and there are chicks that don't. Yeah? That's the only two kinds there are. <laughs> <laughs> right, this 70s we mentioned there with the LA thing that was massive over the world and then bang, punk. Well, the 70s uh, was punk. Yeah, but it did, you know, it felt like it was a punctuation to the whole thing, didn't it? I, I just thought there was a bunch of yobos, really. And I was right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know a yobo when I see one. Musically, though. Well, we came up the same time. Motorhead was formed yeah. at the same time as all the punk bands were formed. You, you, you were pretty much the only one from another generation who was given the seal of approval, weren't you? Well, that's because I was approvable. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we gave them what they asked for. You know, we gave them rock and roll. Rock and roll's always popular. It's only the media that goes in and out with it and tries to make it unpopular because they can't think of anything new to write about it. So it's bollocks, you know, as usual. The media is always bollocks. You're bollocks, all you. <laughs> Cheers. In the nicest possible way, you know. <laughs> Did you get into the music, though? Did the Pistols' first album mean anything to you? I thought the Pistols were great. There was a dig that was happening with punk, though, from a lot of musicians from a, a previous generation, wasn't it? That, oh, these guys can't play. The, they mistook technique for excitement, yeah. you know. And that, that quite often gets lost, doesn't it? It's never been true, you know. If, if a band excites the public, then you can forget all your technique right there, throw it out the window. Did Sid to play the bass? No, no, I failed to teach Sid <laughs> to play the bass. Because Sid had actually no aptitude for the bass whatsoever. And I told him that, I said, Sid, you can't play bass. And then three months later he went, yeah, let me guess what? I said, what, Sid? He said, I've got a job in the Sex Pistols. I said, doing what? He said, playing bass, you know. And I said, but you can't play bass, Sid. And he said, yeah, I know, but I'm in the Sex Pistols. <laughs> Which says it all, really, you know what I mean? Did his death touch you? I was very sad about Sid dying, yeah, because he never had a chance, you know. I mean, especially after Nancy got hold of him, and that was, he was over, you know. Did you meet her? Oh, yeah. She was a peg, you know. Uh, enough, you know. OK. If Sid's death affected you, then you've seen quite a few fall by the, by the wayside, haven't you? Yeah, about 300 of them. Fuck. Well, does, that, get, does that not give it's you It's a terrible thing to say, but you get used to it after a while, you know. Because you can see them beginning to go before they do, you know. Does that not ring the warnings in your... In your what head? warnings? I'm not doing what they do. Mm. Heroin is usually the cause of that, like with Sid it was. Heroin definitely kills you. I mean, everything else might kill you, but I've never seen it. But there's a lot of things you can take to excess, isn't there? There's a lot of things, there's a lot of things. Even the only booze, thing even I that ever, can do you in. The only thing I ever saw anybody die on was heroin. Right. Or inhale your own vomit drunk, you're right, yeah. That's it. Nobody ever died on marijuana or speed or acid or anything. They all died on heroin. But you are a man of excesses. I mean, we're sitting here and you, we're, we're knocking these back, left, right and centre. I am, anyway. <laughs> I am and all. It's not a very big glass. <laughs> do, you know, do, do you ever wake up without a hangover? The thing about hangovers is you have to stop to get one. How many days do you reckon you've done on the trot, then? How many what? What's, what's, what's the record, what's the Lemmy record for days on the trot? Oh, two on? weeks once. Two weeks? Yeah without a blink <laughs> and all i ate during that time was two individual fruit pies and a yogurt <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh, believe me i don't recommend my lifestyle particularly because i mean a lot of people tried to keep up with me and really fucked up you know but it suits me you see mm. personally you have to find out what suits you and then do that small one yeah go with it 
So records, we've gone through a set of records that have embraced rock and roll, that have embraced the 60s, that have embraced the 70s, that have embraced punk. And the 50s. And you've been there, at, you've, and uh, for a lot of that time you've been a musician through that. How on earth have you t kept it on track? Why do you think that you are so endearing? Is it the music? Is I it you it. as a character? Because I believe it. My character is based on rock and roll. I believe in rock and roll. It's great. It's better than Christianity. It never let me down. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you say hallelujah? <laughs> I knew you could. Yeah, man. Current state of affairs as far as music goes. Boy bands? Oh, yeah, they're really good, yeah. What about DJs? DJ fronted records. What's your take on that? Oh, absolutely cutting edge shit, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, you could put their contribution in a hat and still have room for their head, you know. <laughs> I mean, DJs are DJs, they play records. What the fuck have they contributed, you know? Wow, yeah, he's a really good DJ. Okay, next, you know. What's he do for a living? Well, he plays stuff by other people. Okay, that's good too. What sort of music's around in the last few years that you, you do hold in your collection that you can go back to again and again? The best band to come out of England for 10 years is Skunk and Anzi, you know? Yeah. Skin is... Uh, a great rock and roll person, you know. I mean, she probably doesn't realise it, but she's, like, up there with little Richard, you know. Yeah. And she has a wonderful voice, you know what I mean? And then they, they write great stuff, and the arrangements are great, you know. They're really a good band. It's almost like listening to the Beatles, listening to them. There's something new every time you listen to them, you know. Good right. luck, guys. If you're going to go out, and if you're going to go out in a blaze of glory, would you, how, how do you see that? Do you see yourself flat on your back with a 19-year-old and your face in a bottle of Jack by your side. Well, that's not that bad, is it, really? <laughs> I've had a pretty good life, man, you know, I can't complain. I've been at all the interesting bits of rock and roll and that was a pretty good thing, you know. And I ain't finished yet either, you know. <laughs> I drink to that. Yeah, so <laughs> I. <laughs>